<laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me as I share my thoughts on A Quiet Place, day one. A Quiet Place Day 1 fell at number 3 on my most anticipated summer blockbuster list of this year. It's because I love the Quiet Place movies, because, man, you empathize with these characters. Every single, you, you love the family, you, you uh, get invested with them, and from the get-go of A Quiet Place, you know anything can happen. Any, everybody's vulnerable. In Day 1, the always fabulous, Oscar-winning actress, talented She's so talented. Lupita Nyong'o uh, plays a bitter, angry woman who just happens to be trapped in Ma Manhattan. And she's joined by uh, the Stranger Things breakout star, Joseph Quinn, uh, who actually shows an amount of acting rage. If it, this movie doesn't solidify him as a rising star, I don't know what will. What they do with these characters is that we get so emotionally involved with them. And that's what makes this movie work. I mean, the... Bottom line, this is a survival film. So if you're looking for like story structure and all this, you know, you're looking for like a, a, a cinephile type of feel for it. it. It's not that. This is not what this is. At its base, it's a survival film and you get emotionally attached to the characters. And that's what good horror does. That's why zombie films work so well is because it's always invested in the characters. And what A Quiet Place does is that you get invested in the characters. And these are really well drawn out characters and you and you want to go on that ride with them. And what's interesting about this, and we're getting back to the cat thing, is that, you know, this could have been like uh, Benji the Hunted. I don't know if you remember that film, but Benji the Hunted. It could have been exactly like that. Frodo, I see, I see you screenwriters. Frodo, going on that journey. So it could have been Frodo the journey. It could, it, the movie could have just been about the cat. It's a service cat. It's because, you know, it's it, it pays really good homage to the uh, emotional support animals because it's not only the emotional emotional support animals for the characters. This cat is the emotional support character for the audience, which is awesome, <laughs> which you've never seen before. And I think anybody is going to view this film. It's always going to be about the cat. You're going to talk about the cat. And in fact, you know, what? if you're going to make another quiet place, make it about the cat. Frodo is the breakout star. And if you if you don't know anything about the director, uh, Michael Cernoski, he directed a, a little watch film with Nicolas Cage called Pig. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go watch Pig. It's kind of this, almost the same setup as, as day one. In Pig, he just goes out to search for his pig that was stolen from him. Who has my pig? In a quiet place. She just wants pizza. When a, when a film is so simplistic like that, it could really either go one of two ways. You know, people can just pick it apart. Like, this is just, you know, easy, smolty, smolty, cinema, you know, blah, blah, blah. So in Pig, you know that, you know, in Pig, Nicholas Cage is just trying to find his stolen pig. Who has my pig? In A Quiet Place Day One, she just wants a slice of pizza. That's all she wants. There's a little bit more to it, but... I'm not going to give anything away. What makes the this movie work is that because you can relate to that. You empathize with that. And that's why these types of movies work. And if you look into it, even try to go even more in depth with that, then you're missing the whole point of the movie. This is a perfect summer blockbuster. It does everything it's supposed to do. And if you're overthinking a movie like A Quiet Place Day One, then... I believe this is a film that everyone can go see. I don't see anybody having a problem with it. If, unless you are one of those people that overthink things. No, it doesn't answer the questions that you may be wanting. Um, I did, uh, you know, it doesn't say anything about the death angels or where they're coming from or what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, and if you don't know that, yeah, the, the monsters are called Death Angels. It doesn't expand on the franchise. It doesn't. And I think that's the whole thing. It doesn't need to tell you. That's the scary part. And I, from what I understand, it, it, they're just supposed to be animalistic. They have instinct to to kill. That's it. If you if it's a, a building a world, I 
it's just uh, another viewpoint of people trying to survive something so catastrophic. And that's it. That's it. And it puts you right there in it. And I think it's a movie that we all need. And I think it's when you're dealing with uh, human connection and empathy and helping each other out. This is a film that, that touches on that and it's important. And I think, like I said, for a summer blockbuster film, this is perfect. It's what we need right now. It's a lot of fun. It's anxiety inducing. It is just, you know, it gets your heartbeat going and that's the fun. These are, these are movies that make summer blockbusters fun. No, that's just my opinion. If you have any other thoughts or you hated this movie or agree, please, you know, drop me a line. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I just, I don't I'm, I'm, I really kind of think they need to make a, a movie with just the cat. So. Frodo the Hunted. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time. Who has my pick?